eternal life that he has granted to you. We offer him an individual and a corporate praise. We tell him thank you. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your life. Thank you for the stripes that you took out of you. Thank you, O oh God. Hallelujah. For the mental, for the spiritual healing, O oh God. I give you praise and thank you for eternal life, for laying your life down. That I might have a right to the tree of life. You can praise me. One more time. Can we put our hands together? There is power. Power. Wonder working power. Hallelujah. The blood has not lost its power. It's not lost its power. Same blood, same power. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord today. He is a mighty God. I love what Jesus said. He said, no man take my life. But I laid it down. And he laid it down because he loved us so much. But he said, if I lay it down, I got the power to pick it up again. That's why he got out of the grave on the third day to let us to know that he has power over death, hell, and the grave. And because he lived, we can live. I'm not going, I'm not going to be here too long today, but I believe the Lord wants to speak to us. I know the Lord wants to speak to us. I'm going to go to a very familiar passage of scripture, and I will tell you that as I was reading in my mind, I was going in one direction, I thought. But as I begin to read for the purpose of getting context to the text, the Lord heightened my attention to another place, and I believe the Lord would have us to, to focus there this morning. We're going to go to the book of Mark, the fifth chapter. Read verses 1 until I stop. <laughs> I've got 19 verses here and I'm not going to read all 19 of them. Uh, I'll stop uh, when I stop. Mark chapter 5 verse number 1 and if you would also put your you can turn over real quick like the old church used to do and uh, put your finger in Luke chapter number 4. Luke chapter number 4, verse number 16. We'll read Mark first and then we'll go to the book of Luke. Lord, to help us to tie this together and get out of the way. Mark chapter 5, verse number 1, and it declares, And they came over to the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Everybody say, an unclean spirit. Amen. That that suggests one. Amen. Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that when he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, he was strong, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. 
And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice saying, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. That's singular. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. I'm going to jump down to verse number 15 just for the sake of time. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and the legion. Sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. I'm gonna stop right there. I feel the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Luke chapter number four, verse sixteen through nineteen. Luke 4, 16 through 19. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Lord, help me today. Thus be the reading of the word of the Lord. Lord, help me today. I want to simply speak from this subject. If you will help me to announce it to your neighbor. I'll try not to bother them anymore today. I'll just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Jesus, Jesus still, still has the power. Has the power. You may be seated. In the presence of the Lord. I, I'm convinced that it's time like never before that the true believer begins to wax stronger in spirit, to take up arms take up arms in the spirit because the kingdom of darkness has intensified its attack number one on humanity and number two it is desiring to destroy the church of the living God I'm convinced that as never before we are in a time of increased demonic activity. I don't want you to be nervous and I don't want you to be like the people that are in the text. The Bible declares that after seeing the capability, the power and the authority that Jesus had over the unclean spirit, rather than the people celebrating this reality, they were afraid. I, I, I don't want us to settle into the mindset of merely coming to church, jumping and shouting, speaking in tongues, preaching the word of God, and there'll be no demonstration. 
I know I'm on the right street this morning. I don't want us to settle into that because I just do not believe that Jesus died and shed his blood, gave his body for us to be simply emotional Christians. Right. Right. I, I'm concerned because we live in a day and a time in which I, I, I am somewhat convinced that we have more emotional Christians than we do those that possess the power of God. Jesus did not die for us to be emotional. Right. And, and, and we can prove that uh, uh, the, the, the church or Christianity at large, especially in the ranks of what we affiliate with, we, 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 we can attest to the reality that people are very emotional and they don't so much as have conviction about the power of God because except the music is right and the lighting is right and the song is right, God cannot get praised as being the ultimate power in the world. People are emotional. Can I tell you that your emotions does not give you the power shout and stomp your feet. It doesn't matter how much you shake the mic. The devil is not going to back up out of your life or anybody else's life. And sure enough, he ain't going to back up out of the church unless the resident power of the almighty God is in our presence and in our midst. I heard it said even on this weekend, and I know it's the truth, and the Lord was just uh, dealing with my spirit. I, I heard it said, he said, uh, uh, if thou in the times in which we live, the majority of demonic activity that we see is number one in politics and number two in the church. That, 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 that ought to concern the church of the living God because we understand that while the church of God, amen, is a hospital, it is a place in which people, amen, that have sinned, sick souls can come, amen, and they can recover because of the power of God. I can hear the Lord. As he began to speak to the prophet, he said, is there no bomb in Gilead? In other words, amen, the church, God being a hospital that somebody ought to be recovering, amen, from the impact of sin. Amen. It should not be that the church is filled with patience in which, amen, they are not taking the medicine of the word of God and being healed, but rather, amen, the spirit of the enemy has now services because we are no longer concerned, amen, about the power of God and the demonstration of God's power. We are more concerned about how we feel and did we get our shot on. But can I tell you this morning, amen, that the Spirit of God is upon your life not to make you a good professional shouter or a good singer, but God has given you the power to go forth and to destroy the works of the devil. Somebody shout hallelujah. It is time, it is time for the people of God, amen, to wax stronger in spirit. And we see this, we see what it's going to take and what it requires when we look at Jesus, amen. The Bible says that Jesus, amen, was drove, amen, by the spirit into the wilderness. He went there, amen, we understand that he was fast and he was on a fast. And while he was there on the fast, amen, the spirit of God in him led of the devil. Amen. But the Bible declares to us that after Jesus finished his fast and came out of the wilderness that Jesus waxed strong in spirit. I can hear the word of the Lord telling us today, finally my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It is not time for us brothers and sisters to give in amen to being weak minded Christians. It, it, it's not time. It's not time to get to the place in which we have become accustomed, amen, to the bondage of the devil that is wrong, amen, as the devil will leave me on my chain and allow me to come to church and shout, but I can't be free, then I'm all right with that. The devil is a liar. Amen. If I hear the word of the Lord say, I have come that you might have life and it more abundantly. Somebody shout abundant life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we must understand 
understand that we've got to get strong in the Lord. We're going to have to turn our plate. Now, this ain't going to be no popular message. You ain't going to jump and shout today, but it's time for the people of God to gird up the lounge of our minds to understand, amen, that we are in warfare. We must understand that the devil does not fight fair. The devil, the devil is not going to leave you alone. The devil's not going to leave your children alone. And if you expect a man to come to church on Sunday morning and have a good emotional feeling and think that that's going to be enough, amen, to make the devil leave you alone on your job on Monday, the devil is a liar. Amen. But you have come into the house of God to be strengthened in the inner man so that when you leave the sanctuary, you have the power, amen, to push back the darkness and the spirit of the devil. Somebody put your hands together and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm concerned, brothers and sisters, because it seems that the attitude of our society has changed in regards to the reality of demonic possession. I, I, I'm not here. I'm not here to scare you. Amen. And if you got the power of God on the inside of you, you shouldn't be scared because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. That's what's wrong right there. That's wrong. Amen. We start talking about the activity of the devil and folk in the church get skirmish and they get amen a little nervous as if, if we talk about the devil he gonna show up and then what are we gonna do? But honey we gonna do what God gave us the power to do. We gonna rebuke the devil, resist the devil and he's got to flee. My God, our society has changed in regards to the reality of demonic oppression and possession. Our society now at one time it seemed as if amen they would discount the reality amen of the devil's existence and his Influence. But now we are in a society in which, amen, because of the TV shows and because of the, the, the movies and all of the books and the paraphernalia, huh, my God, that has been created in recognition of the power of the devil, huh, our society now is admitting that there is demonic activity. Huh, uh, but we got to be wise, brothers and sisters, because the devil is not simply exposed himself, huh? amen, for you to know that he exists, huh? but the devil is desiring to, to cause us huh? to be desensitized to what he's doing, huh? in other words, because of the TV show that our children watch, huh? they're not scared of the devil because the devil's got a good witch, huh? oh Lord have mercy, huh? the devil is a liar, for the Bible declares unto us, huh? my God, that the thief cometh not your neighbor and say, neighbor, that is no good devil. Huh? Lord, have mercy. Huh? My God, just because the devil has brought you what you like, huh? it does not mean that the devil is a good devil. Huh? Amen. Because the devil has only one agenda, huh? and that is to destroy humanity huh? and the church of the living God. Huh? I feel like preaching this morning. Thank you, God. But the devil is a liar. For I heard Jesus when he began to declare that upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. In other words, I know the devil doesn't like what we're doing here this morning. But that should not discourage us from calling on the name of Jesus. Matter of fact, you ought to call on the name of Jesus just to call the devil. He realizes that there's one God and his name is Jesus. Look at your neighbor. I said I wasn't going to bother them. But before you go to sleep on me, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, even the devil has enough sense to know what the name is. But the Bible declares that at the name of Jesus, every knee's got to bow. And every tongue will confess. As a matter of fact, the Bible declares that when you call on the name of Jesus, the devil begins to tremble at the name. I dare somebody. 
not only that, we must understand uh, that the devil is intelligent. Uh, I need to tell somebody now, uh, the devil is not omnipresent, uh, which means that he does not have the power, uh, my God, to be in every place at one time. Uh, my God, he doesn't have the same power that God has, uh, but he's got some imps and some demons uh, that are running you so crazy that you'll believe uh, that Satan himself has showed up at your house. Uh, but the devil is a liar. Uh, demons are intelligent. Uh, why are they so intelligent? Because uh, they've been here since the beginning of time. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, the Bible teaches us of the rebellion that was in heaven. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, it teaches us uh, how Satan wants to extend. Uh, my God, exalt his throne above the throne of God. Uh, and God sent him out of heaven. Uh, and a third of the angels went with him because uh, they agreed with his rebellion. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, uh, you in a bush and talk 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm almost there, y'all. Give me about 10 more minutes. Yes, God. So the devil is intelligent. And he knows that God he is the supreme source. Even though the devil was cast out of heaven, we need to also understand that sometimes God has used the devil and demonic activity to fulfill his purpose. I know some of y'all getting nervous now. Say that again. Sometimes God huh, will use the devil because huh, the devil is still serving him. Huh, even though he's got an agenda, huh, he's got to bow to the will of God. Huh, Y'all don't believe me. Huh, thank you, Lord. Huh, in the book of Judges, chapter number nine, huh, we see where God sent an evil spirit huh, to stir up the people of Shittim. Huh, Samuel chapter number 16 uh, we see where God sent an evil spirit from the Lord uh, my God that brought mental disturbance uh, in order to punish Saul for his disobedience uh, hi, I'm almost there now uh, we see in 1 Kings chapter 22 uh, that God sent a deceiving spirit uh, my God to control King Ahab's prophets uh, so that they would lie and give him wrong advice. Uh, we see in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. Uh, where Paul declared that there was given unto me uh, a messenger of Satan. Uh, to buffet me so that I don't get exalted. Uh, above measure for the much revelation. Uh, I'm trying to tell you God and use the devil. Uh, to get your attention sometime. But I need to hear somebody shout, but Jesus, he still has the power. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we understand now that the battle that we're in, today we have an enemy that is unseen. But the battle is still real. And the struggle is personal. That's why Ephesians chapter 6 declares, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Your problem is not your boss. My God, your problem is the devil. Your problem is not your mother or your father. Your problem is the devil that's giving you the spirit of rebellion. Yes, God. That's what we need to focus. And that's what we see now. In the text, I'm there now. In the text, we are introduced here to a man that is under the power of Satan. The Bible declares that he has an unclean spirit. He's got a spirit of immorality. He's got a spirit that's working against the purpose of God in his life. Yes, Lord. As a matter of fact, the Bible says he got an unclean spirit. He's got a spirit now that makes him work against the purpose of God in his life. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. And this spirit is not just making him have headaches, but the Bible declares the spirit is making him live amongst dead folk. This spirit has made him comfortable in dead situations. This spirit has made him make sense of sleeping with dead things. That's necromancy. That's a sin. Yes, it is. Go back into the old law. But the Bible declares because of the influence of the devil, he's gotten satisfied dealing with dead stuff. Help all your neighbor to leave that dead stuff alone. Lord, have mercy. Yes, Lord. Not only does he live in the tombs, but the Bible declares because he's so tormented that the folk that he loves, they try to 
chain him up to keep him from hurting himself. But the power of Satan is strong. And it'll make you do what you said you wouldn't do if you yield your members unto the devil. And the Bible declares that they chain him up, but he breaks the chain. I don't know nobody in their right mind that's got the power to break a master lock with a bad hand. But the Bible said that he would break the chains asunder. He would run up into the mountains. And he had insomnia. Insomnia, apparently. Called the Bible declaring day and night. He would run into the mountain. And he would take a stone. And he would cut himself. That's called self mutilization. The devil had given him a lunatic spirit. I need to power for a minute now. Yeah. 
commit suicide, but he's trying to show us something. Number one, he's showing us that deliverance, he's demonstrating that demons are real and deliverance. Thank you, Lord. And deliverance is possible. I need somebody to say that right now.
like we was all born in sin. Satan in iniquity. Cause of that, the enemy had access into his life. And he was tormenting that boy. It doesn't matter if you if the devil showed up at age 20 or it started manifesting at the age of one. Jesus still has the power. Man is showing us something. The Bible said, I, I'm, I'm gone, I'm, I'm gone. The Bible said, after he delivered him, the man said, I want to follow you, Jesus. I want to go and serve you. But he said something to him. He said, no, go back home. In other words, before you're ready to serve me, you need to make sure you're serving faithfully at home. Before you can follow me out in public and try to declare what I've done in your life, you need to make sure that that same testimony and conviction is resonant in your house. I, I, I know we want to go
Amen. 